Good afternoon, and it's time for our monthly podcast, believe it or not, episode 15 now. So, uh, as always, just a couple of recommendations. First of all, all available on the YouTube channel. So, Richard Burbles and my name's at the top there. Please feel free to type that in onto YouTube. And everything is on there. Loads of cabaret stuff. Uh, loads of all the podcasts as well. So, uh, do have a look on there. And this will be available as an audio podcast on iTunes or Spotify later on this afternoon. Right, okay. So, going on to the questions I've had. 10 questions this month. Um, this month's topic is all about what makes a great follow. Okay, now you may notice I'm not a lady. Okay, so therefore we're going to use the follow phrase in this um, because men can do the follow part, ladies can do the lead part. So we're just going to call it follow for today. There are hundreds of other things that will, inc you know, you will incorporate being a great follow. However, for me, when I, often I teach people how to dance and all that type of stuff, then we focus on these five things as a follow. And these are the, generally the ones that ladies come up to me and say, this is what I struggle with. Can I help get help on these parts? These are five basic things that we do. I'm going to split them down into the five categories, okay? So we will do that. But first of all, the questions, okay? So first of all, should a follow just follow? No. Is my answer, my personal answer to that, okay? So for me, I've spoken before about my third theory. So in a dance, the music should tell you a third of the time what to do. The lead should be leading the dance by a third and the follow should be inputting about a third of the dance, okay? That doesn't mean that you just literally, I'm obedient, please give me everything you've got. I want you as a follow to input into the dance. Give me everything you can give regarding what's happening with the music, interpreting all of that. So no ladies or men doing the follow part. It's your responsibility, as much your responsibility of the dance as it is the leads, okay? So is there a right and wrong way to do things? It's an interesting question as well. Um, so for me again, no, there is, um, dance is an art form. There's, you know, I've said this phrase many times before, Picasso and Monet, both amazing artists regarding painting. Um, completely different, but is one better than the other? No, they're just very, very different ways of doing it. In dance, there are certain things that are better to do. However, it is still the scenario that it is an art form, so there's no right or wrong answers, just people's personal opinions, okay? Hopefully, Linda will see you soon. You can't wait to get down to one of the freestyles. Do come on down, they're always amazing freestyles. Um, I love this next question. Who is in command on the dance floor, leads or follows? Um, there is that classic phrase, and that is, is that the men are the frame of a picture and the ladies are the picture themselves, okay, and therefore they're there to decorate the picture. I can't go one further stage than that, and that the men are almost draw the picture and the ladies are there to colour it in and actually to bring it to life rather than it being a black and white picture. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the way I like to do it. But in truth, actually, ladies, you're in control or followers, you're in control of the dance form because the men are asking you to do things and it's your control whether you do them or not. So, um, so yeah, the leads are leading the dance as such, but ladies, you have the choice whether you actually decide to follow them or not. So yeah. So in answer to the question, you're both in charge, <laughs> is the answer to that. Uh, is it okay to do what I want? Um, to a degree, and the next question that was link linked on with that, should I sabotage all of the time? Um, I, again, I've said this before in previous podcasts, I've had certain ladies that tried to sabotage like 20, 30 times in a three minute section. Um, I can't say I'll be dancing with that person again very shortly. Um, for me, sabotaging is fine. If there's the odd bit that you want to sabotage, by all means, go for it. That's no problem at all. If you're doing it over and over again, then effectively you're just ruining what the man is or the lead is trying to do. So the basic principle is you should always try and embellish. Thank you, Danny, for that phrase. I do like that phrase. Um, try and embellish whatever the man is giving you. So you should always try and do something within the man's lead if that is at all possible. Yes, there are times when you will sabotage whatever he's doing, but generally try and dance within the man's lead depending on what he is leading, okay? If there's something in the music that tells you to do it and the man's not obviously going to lead it, then by all means, as I follow myself, I will lead that part myself and men have to kind of deal with that. All leads have to kind of deal with it. Right, on to some other questions. Body weight versus dance weight. Why leads prefer followers who have a low dance weight? Generally have no idea what that means, so um, let's move on. Um, <laughs> in all truth, uh, me personally, I actually prefer the opposite, if I'm honest. So I much prefer my partner, as they step back, to have their body weight coming up at the end, and I'll explain that more when we go into the specifics of the moves in a moment. So, uh, so yeah, I'd much rather 
weight going up at the end rather than coming down because that makes you a lighter follower and therefore it's easier to lead you so um so yeah i don't personally prefer a follow with a, da a low dance weight but that's again only my personal opinion um how can followers achieve better flight flow i've asked this again in previous podcasts but i'll, I'll talk more about it when we talk about the straightening of the back leg and again the same principle about what i just said a second ago about the weight coming up at the end that makes you flow much more into a dance um why should a follower keep time isn't that the lead's job again going back to the first question should a follow just follow in the third theory for me personally the way that dancing has been done over the last almost 100 years you could almost say is that the men are the dominant force we are in charge and ladies i'm going to lay back and think of wherever you may come from and i'm obedient to whatever the man says for me personally i think ladies should be as responsible for the dance as a man okay that is a bold statement and very few other people necessarily agree with that however ladies it's your responsibility it's a partner dance you do your part as best as you can do it and let the man do whatever he's going to do as a follow i don't really pay too much attention to what the man's going to do of course i follow him but i'm thinking how can i personally add to this particular dance and regarding keeping time absolutely ladies it's your responsibility to keep as much of the time as the lead or as the man um why a lead likes a follower who styles in time to the music tempo rhythm slow fast variation again i go back to that point earlier on about the thirds theory that as a lead you know if i'm doing a a lean for instance i'm a demo i'm ready okay as a lead i will take that step out to the side and that's my position that's pretty much all i'm going to do i'm then reliant on my follow to then embellish it, decorate it, make it into whatever it's going to be, whether it's going to be a back bend, a normal lean, a sit lean, whatever, or the splits, whatever they're going to do, that's down to them to do it. So I rely personally on my follow to actually make the dance more interesting. And if it's just left to me and my 25 basic moves, I may have a couple more, um, then I become bored with myself and my own dancing. As a follow, you get to dance, let's say in a normal night, 50 different times with 50 different people on a freestyle night. As a lead, you're dancing the same dance over and over again. Um, so actually to have a follow that makes it more interesting for you is actually something which is much better. So ladies or follows, go for it is my answer to that. And can a follower do fake, fake waltz, funk, tango styles? Absolutely, do whatever you like as long as you don't ruin the man's lead over and over again. So there you go. They are the 10 questions this week. Thank you all this month. Thank you for those. Right, so what makes a great follow? Five basics I'm going to give you. Okay, I'll tell you what they are to start with and then I'll roll through them in slightly slower time. So first section, feet, arms and hands. Second section, spinning. Third section is frame. Fourth section is drops, dips or leans. And the last one is slow walks for the ladies, which is always the one, seems quite simple, but the one that ladies always struggle with more than anything else. Okay, so first of all, I'm not going to go into too much detail on each of these, okay, but these are the things, if you work on these five parts, ladies, or follows, then that's the type of thing that will actually help you enormously, okay? So, first of all, um, I always talk about rolling through your foot, whether it's forwards or backwards. So, when you're stepping back, you're looking to bring the knee forwards, and we roll through the foot, and ideally, we want to have a straight leg as we step back. That is what's going to get your weight going up at the very end, make your life follow. Again, if you have a bent leg, your weight's gonna sink down, that's gonna pull hard on the man's left, on the man's hand, okay? So we wanna roll through the foot, like so. Angle of the foot, each time you step, generally always step back on your right foot once the point towards one o'clock, okay? So each time you're stepping, it goes towards one o'clock, okay? So they're kind of the feet part to start with anyway. Regarding the arms, generally what I always say to ladies, and to men as well actually, next month, by the way, just in case you're wondering is, what makes a great lead, I thought I'd follow it up. Okay, it's generally have your arms above waist level and always have a gap in between your arms and your body. As soon as you try and do that, then A, you look like a penguin, and B, just if the man's trying to get hold of the inside of the arm, then he kind of has to knock things out of the way, which can be a bit embarrassing. So you kind of want to make sure there's always a gap and always above waist level is what you're looking for. Again, what lots of ladies have said to me is they feel really uncomfortable about taking their arms out to the side, for instance, and taking them out or taking them up, whatever it may be. And generally, when we're walking down the street, we don't walk down the street kind of doing all of this type of stuff. So it is unnatural for us to do that as a dancer. So we've got to kind of learn how to do it. The basic principles is that they should move. 
all of the time. I'm not a great fan of ladies putting their arm out and then just walking forwards and backwards and acting like a mannequin. At the same time, they don't want to be flying around everywhere like a rag doll. So it's somewhere in between. So we always want to have control of our arms each time you're doing it. Okay, so that's what you're looking for there. Okay, regarding the hands is the next part. Is again, I mentioned this last month about the hooking versus sorry, if I get around to that, there we go. So the hooking rather than the straight hand. If you have a straight hand, that's going to give you more chance to stretch away from your partner. If you have a hook, that's going to stop you. Okay, so you'll feel heavier if you hook your hand. So you want to have fingers pointing towards the man. The men can then have their hand in that position there, okay, which makes it much more comfortable to dance with. So that's one part. But regarding shape of the hands, generally the position is, and it comes from ballroom, is that the men have a V shape on their shoulder. What you're looking for is with your middle finger and your thumb is to push up on the middle part of the shoulder. Then you take the hand position away and there is your hand position. Okay, so just drop that middle finger down and it comes from there. So when the arm's out to the side and you go to place it on the man's shoulder, it's already in the correct position. Hand is always facing down. Try not to have the hand up. It's serving Yay. Okay, so you want to make sure the hand is facing down, serving when we come to leans and drops, that type of thing. Arm is always facing down. Okay, so that's generally your arms. We could go into much more detail, but on this occasion, I'm not going to, okay? So there's the first part. So it's feet, arms, and hands. The second section, spinning. Again, go back to podcast 13, I think it was, where we did all about spinning. Okay, so spinning, the basic principle, if I just bring this down a little bit more for you so you can see, the basic principle with spinning is commit your weight forwards, go into the open position to start with, then into the closed position. You spin with your feet together. The closer your feet are together, the quicker you will go round. So it's a very slow spin there as I've done that, okay? And then step back at the very end. But the basic principle is, is that as you come forwards, you want to have your body position open, as you go for the spin, you want to come into a closed position. Okay, so we go from open to closed and then finish off at the very end. Okay, so that's spinning for you. Okay, best way to practice spinning is on a traveling Ciroc spin. So as you're coming forwards for that traveling Ciroc spin, really whip that left arm in. That's what's going to give you all the momentum. Remember, these are your accelerators, and these are here for support. Okay, so arms the accelerators when you are doing your spinning, okay? Next part is frame. Now, again, lots of people have said to me, you know, we're not doing ballroom, and I fully appreciate that. That's not what we're doing, okay? When we're in frame, again, judging at the Southwest Champs, I saw an enormous amount of people. They go into frame like this, and everything would be quite looking okay, and then the fingers that were joined at this point here were flapping, like making the butterfly pattern on the wall, okay? So just close the hands over, please, with a bugbear of mine for Welsh Champs if you are doing that. Okay, but when we're in frame, what we want to make sure we're doing is, and this happens in all of dancing, so on a slingshot, for instance, ladies, as you step back, really push your back into the man's hand. That's what's going to give him some leverage to lead you forward, okay? If you've always got your body weight forwards, then it's not going to go back into the man. So, ladies, it's all about keeping the shoulders down, okay? Keeping your back up, right? Squeeze your bum muscles, squeeze your core. That's going to give you some good frame at that stage there. Arms should be down nice and low, but it's not just about frame when we're, in, when we're actually in frame, for instance. It's just equally about our arm tension as well. So if I'm doing a move where I'm gonna do a caress, for instance, over the top of the lady's head, then what I'll do personally as a man is I'll relax my arms. Okay? And then as I take the hand over the top of the lady's head, what I'm looking for is the lady's frame to relax with that as well and go over the top. Okay? However, if I'm doing something like a hammer, hammer throw where I'm turning around really quickly and I'm going to throw that hand down quite quickly. What I need the lady's arm to do is as I move her arm down, is I need her body to follow it and to come round with it. What I don't want is for the arm just to do that because then nothing actually happens and the man thinks, oh, I've made a mistake. Remember it, men, it's not always your fault. It's a part of the dance, ladies, you're responsible for your part. So we've got either make it nice and relaxed and feeling the man's arm tension or nice and stiff so therefore if you can afford for a walk for instance you're actually coming forwards and your body weight staying in relationship to your arm okay so there's the next bit about frame right dips drops and leans again we've done these in other podcasts please do have a look back at them on youtube okay but, but just basics on dips and drops is as you come around ladies feet together you want to be in front of the man's right foot if you're going to do a standard dip or a drop the reason for that is you will then stay in the man's body weight 
as you move backwards. If you are too far this way and the man's in that position there, even if you take a reasonable small step back, you're going to be outside of his body weight. Okay, so you want to make sure you're in front of the man's body, man's right foot to start with, bring your feet together, keep your knees together, and then take a step back on that right foot, all the way to committed onto your right foot. Now, the other thing from the lady's perspective or the follower's perspective is the variations. Just like if you're dancing with a man and he's doing the same four moves over and over again, you will get quite bored, okay? We're fully aware of that. Likewise, from the male perspective, what we're doing is we bring you in, we've got you in front of our right foot, and we do our standard lean. We've done our lunge, our left-hand side, keeping everything straight, etc., etc. Okay, and if you're doing the same lean every time, then we get a bit bored. Shh, don't tell anyone. Okay, so therefore, ladies, there's lots of different variations that you can use for that. You can either do the standard one, which is what we call the surfboard these days, where you're opening out to the side, but keeping your whole body weight absolutely straight. You can do the back bend variation where you step and then you push the hips up, tilt the head down at that stage there. You can do a sit variation where you're keeping your back upright and you will actually sit down like so. Or some ladies that are flexible, I won't show this example on this occasion, is they will do the splits and they'll simply sink down. As a man, I would have no idea they're doing that. Literally, I just do the same thing each time my partner is making that choice. And ladies, it's all follows, it's your choice, which makes us four basic variations if you want help in any of those variations, please do come and see myself or any other teachers, of course, they're all happy to help. All right. And the last part is that on that one is decorate it with your arms. So I mentioned arms earlier on, and we always need, I give the men this phrase, always be prepared to lead. So if I'm going to lead a traveling return, for instance, I will get out to my left hand side so the ladies have that clear indication they're going to change places with me and go across. And likewise, if I'm going to do the standard variation of stepping back on a lean and taking the arm out to the side. If my left arm's in this position here and I take it out to there, the journey is from there to there. That's it. Okay. However, if it's prepared to follow and it's all the way across here, remember, nice handshake, palm down, okay, then its journey is all the way out to the side. And of course, then if you follow that with your head, so you look at your hand, the hand moves, the head moves and take it out to the side then that again can look like a nice move. So it's gone from being there to all of a sudden coming across and then all the way out to the side, palm facing down, okay? So different variations that you can do on that, but work on those, you know, film yourselves, look in mirrors, don't be afraid to do all of that. And the last part, that I, again, whenever I do lessons for people, this is the bit that ladies always want to know, because the amount of times they say, so what the men do is they do a high first, they twist me out, and then they say, Go for it, please walk. And as a lady, I go, <laughs> and I try and escape it as quickly as I possibly can. Okay, so, so yeah, some simple variations on walks. This is my lovely moment here. Okay, so some simple variations, okay, is you can do what we call the model walk. So all you're doing is stepping and coming across like so, okay. Taking it nice and slow, you'll take one step per beat. You do a little crossover step to start with, and then you'll just go step, step and step i'm taking small steps in here okay variation number two that i often teach people again you've been back on your right foot you do the little crossover and then we do step tap so just taking the foot out step tap step tap step tap and again there are variations on that another variation that i often give to ladies is do whatever you want so you can go back and then you can kind of just do little triple steps one way then the other you can go forward you can go backwards whatever you want to do you are in control at that point, which is always quite scary, isn't it? But there we go. Okay, so just regarding slow walks, that's when you can then make it your own. It's a chance that the man said, please go for it and uh, and do take it on board. Thank you, Simon Rich. That's very kind of you. Um, so just the last parts on that, okay, is remember the five basics that I talk about. So arms, shoulders, sorry, not arms, shoulders. And that is feet, arms, and hands. Okay, so come straight on your feet, always work on the basics. Use your arms, make sure you've got your hand position correct, okay, on both sides with your pushing or leading backwards, okay. Second section, spinning, work on spinning, get used to doing it. You can't do it enough, just practice, practice, practice. Third part is frame, talk to your partners, get feedback. Am I pulling you? Am I pushing you? What's the position of my tension in my arms, etc., etc. Dips, drops, and leans, vary it up for yourselves, ladies. It's your responsibility to do that. And walking forward slowly, it seems like the easiest thing in the world to do, but most ladies 
panic at that point. Again, just practice it. Get in front of the mirror. You can never do enough. I promise you that. Okay, you'll never do enough. Right, that's the end of this month. Next month, as I said, is all about what makes a great lead. I'd love to have some questions. If you do have any questions, please PM them to me. Um, this will be transferred into a YouTube video later on today, as well as a iTunes and Spotify audio file. Hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you again next month. Thank you very much.